surfeiting, the appetite may sicken, and so die. That strain again, it had a dying fall. Oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Da! Enough! No more! now as it was before. Spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth as the sea, naught enters there of what validity and pitch so e'er but falls into abatement and low price, even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy, that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hunt, my lord? What, Curio? The heart? Why, so I do. The noblest that I have. Oh, when mine eye did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires, like fell and cruel hounds, ere since pursue me. Uh, 
How now? What news from her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted, but from her handmaid, to return this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at ample view, but like a cloistress she will veil and walk, and water once a day her chamber round with eye offending bride. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she will keep fresh and lasting in her sad <laughs> remembrance. She that hath a heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love to but a brother? How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her, when liver, brain, and heart, these sovereign thrones are all supplied and filled her sweet perfections with one self king? Away before me, to sweet beds of flowers, love thoughts lie rich. When canopied with power. <laughs> what a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus? By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier and night. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exception to your ill hours. Let her accept before accepted. Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine myself? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in. That quaffin and trick you will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday. And for the foolish knight that you brought him one night here to be her wooer. Oh, Sir Andrew Aidencheek. I think he's as tall a man as is any in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? He has 3,000 ducats a year. Uh, <laughs> I've been a for a year in all those very fool and a prodigal. Ah, you'll say so. He plays the viol de gamboys and speaks three or four languages word for word with that book. And he hath all the good gifts of nature. Oh, he hath indeed all. Most natural. But besides that, he's a fool. By this hand, there are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him. Who are they? They that act, moreover, is drunk nightly in your company. With drinking health to my niece. Oh. I'll drink to her as long as there is a passage in my throat and drink in an area. He's a card that will not drink, my niece. Sir Toby Mills! Look, Wedge, here comes Andrew Aidencheek. Sir Toby Mills! Oh, no, Sir Toby Mills! Sweet Sir Toby. Well, bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir? A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. What's that? My niece, the chambermaid. Oh, uh, goodness, Sir Cost. I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Ah, good mistress. Mary Acosta. Oh, you mistake, knight. Acosta means front her, board her, lower her, tail her. I might not. I would not undertake her in uh, this company. Is that the meaning of Acosta? Fare you well, gentlemen. And I'll let part so, would thou might never draw sword again. No, and you part so, mistress. I, uh, I would I might never draw sword again. Fair lady, <coughs> do you think you have <coughs> fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Oh, Mary, but you shall have, and here's my hand. <laughs> now, sir, thought is free. I <coughs> pray you bring your hands the butter and bar and let it Where drink. for, sweetheart? <gasps> What's your metaphor? Oh, it's dry, sir. I think so. Uh, but uh, I, my, I, I'm not such a fool, but I can keep my hands dry. But what's your dress? A dry dress, oh, sir. Are you full of them? Oh, Mary, sir, I have them in my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> now I let go your hands. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> go, knight! Thou lackest a cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Oh, never in your life, methinks, unless you see canary put me down. I think sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. I'm a great eater of beef, and I do believe that does harm to my wit. No question. And I thought that utter swearing. Oh, I'll write home to Tell me. Talk quiet, dear knight. What's talk quiet? Do or not do? 
Oh, I'll home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen, and if she be, it's four to one she'll none of me. And that coach himself here hard by woos her. She'll none of her count. She'll not match above a degree, neither in estate years nor wit. I've heard her swear to it. There's hope in it, man. I I'll stay a month longer. I'm a fellow of the strangest mind in the world, and I delight in masks and revels, sometimes all together. <laughs> what is thy excellence in a oh, galliard? Faith, I can cut a caper, <laughs> but I think I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Wherefore are these things hid? Is it a world of high virtues in? I did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg. It was formed under the star of Galliard. Aye, it is strong, and it does indifferent well in a flame-coloured stock. Shall we set about some rebels? <laughs> what else shall we do? Let me see thee, Caper. <laughs> excellent! Excellent! Higher! Higher! <laughs> Do continue these favours toward you, Cesario. You are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. You either fear his negligence or my humour that you call to question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his face? No, believe me. I thank thee. For here comes the Count. Who saw Cesario? Oh! Upon your attendance, my lord. Here. Stand you a while aloof. <coughs> Cesario, thou knowest no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, Address thy gate unto her. Stand at her doors, be not denied access, and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord. But if she be so abandoned her sorrows as tis spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Well, say I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Unfold to her the passion of my love. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to act my woes. She will attend it better in thy youth than in a nuncio's of more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Oh, dear lad, believe it. For they shall yet deny thy happy years that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound, and all is semblative a woman's part. <laughs> I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Prosper well in this, and you shall live as freely as thy lord. Call his fortunes in time. I'll do my best for your lady, sir. Very apt. 
Oh, if Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Illyria. Oh, easy road, no more of that. Here comes my lady, make your excuse wisely. You are there. Wit, and be thy will, put me into good fooling. Those wits that think they have thee, the very old proof fools. And I, that am sure I lack thee, may pass for a wise man. For what say the poets? Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. God bless you, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, sir? Take the lady away. Go to, you're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna, that's drink and good counsel will amend. For give the dry fool drink, then is the fool not dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he is no longer dishonest. Anything that's mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin, and sin that amends is but uh, patched with virtue. Um, if that this uh, simple syllogism will serve, so. If not, what remedy? As there is no true cook old but calamity, so beauty is a flower. Uh, the lady may take away the fool, sir, therefore I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade him take away you. Miss Prison, in the highest degree, I wear not motley in my brain, lady. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. Make your proof. I must uh, catechise you for it, Madonna. Good, my mouse of virtue, answer me. Well, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Sweet Madonna, why mournest thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. Well, the more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, sir. What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? He is, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity for the better increasing your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not give his word for tuppence that you are no fool. How say you to that? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brains than a stone. Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and administer occasion to him, he's gagged. I protest I take these wise men that crow so at these set kind of fools no better than the fool's zane. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malfolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. There is no slander in a loud fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reproof. Now, Mercury, endue thee with leasing, for thou speaks well of fools. <laughs> Madam, tis a fair young man and well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Oh, fetch him up, I pray you. He speaks nothing but man, man. Fie on him. Go you. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss him? Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Thou hast spoke first, Madonna, as if thine eldest son were a fool who stole Joe Cram with bread. Oh, here he comes. One of your kin hath the most weak here maker. Oh, by mine honour, half drunk. <laughs> <laughs> A gentleman. A gentleman. What gentleman? A gentleman. <laughs> oh, plague of those pickled herrings. And how such a Toby. Cousin. Cousin, how have you come so early to this lethargy? Literally. I defy lechery. There's one of the gates. Aye, Mary, what is he? Be the devil and he will, I care not. Give me faith, say I. Well, it's all one. <laughs> uh, madam, yonder young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. It takes on him to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too and therefore comes to speak with you. 
What's to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so. He says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. What kind of a man is he? What? Of mankind? <laughs> what manner of man? A very ill manner. To speak with you, will you all know? What personage he is, is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. It is with him in standing water between boy and man. He is very well favored and speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. <laughs> Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman! My lady.
climb, what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate and fall upon my soul within the house. The right loyal cantors of condemned in love and sing them even in the dead of night. To hallow your name the reverberated hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortune, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. Let him send no more. And yes, perchance, you come to me again. To tell me how he takes it. I thank you for your pains. Uh, spend this for me. You have no fee post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not my son, lacks recompense. A love make his heart a fit that you shall love, and let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruel. What is your parentage? Above my fortune, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. How be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazon. Soft, even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I feel this youth's affection with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eye. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Here, yeah, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger. The county's man. He left this ring behind him. <coughs> Would I ought not to tell him I'll none of it, that I have not done matter with him, nor hold him up with hope. I am not for him. Hide thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. I do, I know not what, and fear to find. Mine eye is too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force, ourselves we do not own. For what is decreed must be, and be this so. Will you stay no longer? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. Therefore I shall crave of you your leave that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me know of you whether you are bound. No, sooth, sir. But I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore it charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You must know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian. My father was that Sebastian of Messalin, whom I know you've heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, would we that so ended? But you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea, was my sister drowned? Alas, the day. A lady, sir. Though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. But thus far, I will boldly publish her. She wore a mind that envy could not but call fair. Oh, she is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir. Your bad entertainment. My kind Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be my servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare ye well at once. I am bound to the Count Orsino's court. Farewell. The graciousness of all the gods go with thee. Many enemies in Orsino's court, else would I very shortly see thee there. Would come what may, I do adore thee so, that danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Were not you even now with the Countess Olivia? And now, sir, in a moderate pace, I have since arrived but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir might have saved me my pains for taking it away yourself. She has, moreover, she put your lord into a desperate assurance she will none of him, and one thing more, 
that you be never so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this receiver, so. She took the ring of me. Oh, none of it. Come, sir. You peevishly threw it to her, and her will is it should be so returned. If you weren't stupid for, there lies in your eye. Not be it his that finds it. I left no ring with her. Of what means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside hath not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much so that he thought her eyes lost her tongue. Well, she did speak and starts distracted me. She loves me, sure. Of the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger, none of my lord's ring. He sent her none. I am the man. <laughs> if it be so, as tis, oh, poor lady, tis better of a dream. <coughs> See, thou art a wickedness when the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper false and women's waxen hearts to set their faults? Alas, it is our frailty that is the cause, not we, for such we are made of, such we be. For this fadge, and my master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she mistaken seems to dote on me. For what will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love, as I am woman. Now, alas, the day. For what thrift the sighs must poor Olivia bring? Oh, time thou must untangle this, not I. <coughs> it is too hard enough for me to untie. My troth, I know not, but I know that to, to be up late is to be up late. <laughs> <laughs> to be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early. So to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Does not our life consist of the four elements? <laughs> so they say, but I, I rather think it, it consists of eating and drinking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> scholar, let us therefore eat and drink. Marianne, a stoop of wine, I say. <laughs> the fool is faith. Oh, now, my heart, did you ever see the picture of wheat breed? <laughs> Welcome, ass, let's have a catch. Oh, excellent. A song. There's sixpence for me. Here's a, a testicle of me, too. If one night... Would you have a love song or a song of good life? A love song, a love song. I, I care not for good life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mistress, where are you? Stay and hear your true love. <laughs> <laughs> that can sing both high and low, <laughs> trip no farther, a pretty sweet <laughs> journey's ending, love meeting every wise man, some <laughs> Oh, excellent, good in faith. Good, good. Oh, what? Sweet and 
If you pride my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Go oh, shake your ears! Curse to the deal. I drink when a man's are hungry. To challenge him the field and then break promise with him and make a fool of him. <laughs> Good night, I'll write thee a challenge or deliver thy indignation by word of mouth. Nay, the sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the counts was today with my lady, she's much out of quiet. As for Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not gull him, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possessors, possessors, tell us something of him. <laughs> Marry, sir, sometimes he is a kind of puritan. Well, I thought that I, I beat him like a dog. <laughs> what? For being a puritan? <laughs> Thy exquisite reason, dear knight? I have no ex exquisite reason, but I have reason good enough. The devil a puritan is, or anything but a time pleaser. Utters it by great swing. The best persuade not himself, so crammed as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all who look on him love him. And on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What <laughs> wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love. <laughs> wherein by the colour of his hair, the manner of his gait, the shape of his leg, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very light for my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make distinction of our hands. Excellent! I smell an <laughs> ally. I, I have it in my nose, too. <laughs> so, he shall think by the letters that thou wilt drop they have come from my niece. And that she's in love with him. Hey, my purpose is indeed a horse of that colour. Uh, and your horse would now make him uh, an ass. Ass? I doubt not. Oh, it will be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work on him. I will plant you two and let Fabienne make the third where he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. For this night, to bed. And dream on the event. Farewell. Good night. Before oh, me, she's a good witch. She's a beagle. <laughs> True bread and one that adores me. What are that? I was adored once too. <laughs> Come, knight, let's to bed. Thou hadst need to send for more money. I cannot recover your niece. I'm a far way out. Send for more money. If thou hast a lot in the end, call me cut. And I do not. Never trust me. Shake it how you will. <laughs> Come hither, knight. I'll go burn some more sack. It is too late to go to bed now. <laughs> Give me some music. Now, good Cesario, but that piece of song, oh, that old and antique song we had last night, we thought it did relieve my passion much. More than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy pace of time. Come, but one verse. He is not here, so please, your lordship, that might sing it. Who was it? A uh, best day, my lord. Uh, a fool that Lady in Lizzie's part took much delight in. He is about the house. Seek him out and play some other tune in the wild. shalt love. In the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are. 
unstained and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. Uh, how dost thou like this tune, boy? It is the very echo to the seat where love is throned. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favour that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little by your favour. Come, what kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. Oh, she's not worth thee, then. <coughs> what years, if faith? About your years, my lord. Too old, by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself. So wears she to him, so sways she level in her husband's heart. Oh, boy. However we do phrase ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more long, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think you well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, or thy affection cannot hold the bent. But women are like roses, whose fair flower being once displayed will fall that very hour. <laughs> Last night, uh, mark it, Cesario. It is old and plain. The spinsters and the knitters and the free maids that weave their thread with bones to use to sing it. It is a uh, silly sooth that dallies with the innocence of love like the old age. Are you ready, sir? I prithee sing. Come away, come away, death. And in sad cypress, let me be lame. Fly away. Pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure then. Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. Uh, give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy God protect you. Farewell. Let all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario. Get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her, my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. Those parts that fortune hath bestowed on her, tell her, I hold as giddily as fortune. But tis that miracle, the queen of gems that nature pranks her in, attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir? I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but... You must say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a great pang of heart. You cannot love her, you tell her so, must she then not be answered? There is no woman's side can stand the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much, but mine is all as hungry as the sea. 
to digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Why, but I know. Oh, what dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true as heart as we. But my father had a daughter, loved a man. Were it perhaps, might I be a woman? I should, your lordship. And what's her history? Blank, my lord. <laughs> Never told her love, but let concealment like a worm in the bud feed on her damask cheek, she pined in thought. Sat like patience on a monument, smiling of grief. Was this not love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows prove little. Still we prove much in our vows and little in our love. But died your sister of her love, boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house. <laughs> And all the brothers, too. <laughs> and yet, I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. Uh, to her in haste. Give her this jewel. Say my love, and give no place. Bide no denay. Here comes my little villain. How now, my metal of India? I can see of you all three. Malvolio is coming down this wall. He has been yonder in the sun, practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Observe him for the love of mockery. For I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. <laughs> <laughs> Close, in the name of Justin. Lie down there. But here comes the trout that must be caught and tickling. <laughs> Should I think on it? Yes, an overweighted rope. I could have beat it. Peace, I say. To be <coughs> Count Malvolio. Rogue! Pistol him, pistol him. Peace, I tell you. There's an example for it. The lady of the straight chair marries the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fire on him. Jezebel. Now he's deeply in. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown. Having come from a daybed, where I have left Olivia asleep. <coughs> Fire and brimstone! He's <laughs> Then to have the humor of state, and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should do theirs, to ask for my kinsman, Toby. <laughs> Boats and shackles! Seven of my people, with an obedient star to make out for him, I frown the while and perchance wind up my watch, play with my, um, some rich jewel. Toby approaches. Curtis is there to me. Shall this fellow live? I extend my hand to him thus. 
quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control, <laughs> saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? Well, you must amend your drunkenness. Out, <laughs> scab. <laughs> Besides, waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. <laughs> <laughs> One Sir Andrew. I knew to lie, for many do call me fool. <laughs> what employment have we here? Oh, well, we're cut near the gin. Read it out, man, read it out. Well, my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her C's, her U's, and her T's and thus makes she her great peas. It is, in contempt of question, her hand. See, so you, Sir T. My hat to the unknown beloved. This and my good wishes, her very praises. By your leave, wax, soft, and the impression her lucrece with which she uses the seal, tis my lady. To whom should this be? This wins him, liver and all. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. No man must know. Follows. Numbers altered. No man must know. This should be he. Marry, hang thee, frog. I may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucrece knife with bloodless stroke, my heart doth gore. M O A I doth sway my life. Oh, but me riddle. M O A I doth sway my life. First, let me see, let me see. Excellent, when say I. I may command where I adore. Why? She may command me. I serve her, she is my lady. This is evidence to any formal capacity. There's no obstruction in this. In the end, what should that alphabetical position portend? I could make that resemble something in me. Softly, M-O-A-R. He is now at a cold scent. This young will cry upon it for all this. He is as rank as a radar. In. Malfolio. <laughs> in. Why, well, that begins my name. Did I not tell you we would work it out? <laughs> but then there is no consonancy in the sequel. A should follow, but O does. And O shall end, I hope. And then I comes behind. Aye, and if you had any I behind you, you'll see more than fortunes before you. M-O-A-I. <laughs> this simulation is not as the former. <laughs> Yet, to crush this a little, it would bow to me. For every one of these letters is in my name. There follows prose. If this fall into thy hands, revolve. <laughs> in my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them. And to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble slough and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Thy tongue tang arguments of state, put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings, and wish to see thee ever cross garter. Say, remember. Go to thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still. The fellow of servants and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she that alters services with thee. The fortunate unhappy. Daylight and champagne discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will battle Sir Toby. I will. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point device of the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me. For every reason excites to this that my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross-garted. And in this, 
She manifests herself to my love and with a kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking. I thank my stars. I am happy. I will be proud. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point device the very man. Jove and my stars be praised. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here is yet a postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainst my love, let it appear in thy smile. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile, dear my sweet, I pity. Jew, I thank thee. I will spy. <laughs> I will do everything. I will have me. I would not give my part of this boat for a pension of thousands. I can marry. Wench for this device, I <laughs> too, and ask no other dowry of her but such another jest. Nor I, Here comes my noble ghost. Wilt thou set thy foot on my neck? Or on mine, I love. Shall I become thy bond slave? Or I. <laughs> thou hast put him in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. Nay, but say true, does it work upon you? Like aqua vitae to a midwife. <laughs> you will then see the fruits of the sport. Mark his first approach before my lady. <coughs> he will come to her in yellow stockings. <laughs> and as a colour she abhors. And cross garters, a fashion she detests. And he will smile upon her. Which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is but it cannot but turn it into a notable contempt. If you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tata, my most excellent devil of wit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make one too. Thou art a merry fellow who cares for nothing. Oh, no, sir. I do care for 
something. Pay my conscience, sir. I do not care for you. If that be to care for no thing, sir, I would it would make you invisible. Art thou not the Lady Olivia's fault? No, the Lady Olivia has no folly. She will admit no fool, sir, until she be married. And fools are like husbands, as pilchards are to herrings. The husband's the bigger. <laughs> no, I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. I saw thee late at the Count Orsino's. Foolery, sir, doth walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. I should be sorry, sir, but that the fool should be as oft with your master as my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. I'll know more with the I hold. There's expenses for thee. Now, Joe, in his next commodity of hair, you send me a beard. <laughs> By my troth, I'll tell thee I'm almost sick for one. Though I wouldn't have it grow on my chin. Who's thy lady with it? Might not a pair of these of bread, sir. Yes. You've kept together and put to use. I would play the Pandar, sir, to bring a Cressida to this Troilus. I understand you, sir. Well begged. The matter of hope is not great, sir, begging but a beggar. My lady is within. I will uh, construe to her whence you come, who you are, and what you would. Are out of my welkin, I might say elements, but the word is overworn. God save thee, gentlemen. And you, sir. Dieu vous garde, monsieur. Have you also bought a servant here? Oh, I hope so you are, and I am yours. <laughs> Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous that you should enter if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece. I mean, she's lifted my voyage. Taste your legs, sir, for the emotion. Well, my... Legs better understand me, sir, than I understand you in bidding me. Taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. I shall give you gate and entrance. But we are prevented. Most accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on you. Oh, the youth's a rare courtier. Rain odors, well. Save your own most pregnant and vouchsafe ear. Odors pregnant, vouchsafe. I've got them all three already. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. <coughs> Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, most humble servant. What is your name? Cesario's your servant's name, fair princess. Your servant's is Count Orsino, you. And he is yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him I think not on him, for his thoughts were blank <coughs> rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. I'll buy your leave, I pray you. I bade you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I'd rather he used to lift at that than music his <coughs> beard. Dear lady. Give me leave. Beseech you, I did send, after your last enchantment here, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me you. Under your hard construction must I sit to force that on you in a shameful punishment. So what might you think? Let me hear you speak. I pity you. Does he agree to laugh? Nay, it is not a grief, but tis vulgar and brute having off pity enemies. Then we think tis time to smile again. How apt the poor are to be proud. If one should be the prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. This clock upbraids me with its waste of time. <coughs> be not afraid, good youth. I will not have you. Yet when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a profit. There lies your way, you well. Then westward home. Stay. I see. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right. I'm not that I play. I would you were if I would have you be. Oh, would it be better, madam? I wish it were, for now I am your fool. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood honour truth, and everything, I love thee so, that more grow all thy pride. Nor wit, nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this cause, for that I woo thou therefore hast no cause. But rather reason thus, and reason better. Love sought for good, but given on sought better. Oh, my innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman ever has, nor ever shall be mistress of it, save I alone. And so a diligent 
madam, never more will I my master's tears to you deplore. Then come again, for thou perhaps mayest move that heart which now falls to like his love. Now, I not said shot from God. Thy reason, dear Venom, gives thy reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. I sought your niece do more favours to the Count's surfing man than she ever bestowed on me. I saw it in the orchard. Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you. Oh, this was a great argument of love in her towards you. Slight, will you make an ass of me? I... I will prove it legitimate, sir, <laughs> upon the oath of valour and reason. And they have been grand jurymen since before Noah was a sailor. She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exhaust great you, to put fire in your heart, brimstone in your liver. <laughs> you should have accosted her, and with some excellent jest, you should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand, but it was balked. <coughs> Double guilt of this opportunity, you let time wash up. Now you have sailed into the north of my lady's opinion, Unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempts of valor or policy. But, but like me, anyways, it must be with valor. Challenge me, the Count's youth, to fight with him. My niece shall take note of it. And assure thyself, there is no love broker in the world can prevail more in man's commendation with woman than a rapport of valor. There is no argument than this, Sir Andrew. Will I of you bear me a challenge to him? Go! Write it in martial hand, be cursed and free. Taunt him with the license of ink. And if thou thouest him some thrice, it will not go amiss. Let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with goose pet no matter. About it, away! <laughs> well, where shall I find you? We'll call for thee. This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have been dear to him, lass. Some 2,000 strong or so. <laughs> <laughs> we shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it, no? Never. <laughs> Trust me. And by all means, stir the youth on to an answer. But Andrew, if he were opened and you find as much blood in his liver, as will clog the foot of a flea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. <laughs> Here comes my little wren. <laughs> if you desire the spleen, I would lock yourself into stitches. Follow me. <laughs> Young girl Malvolio is turned heathen. A very renegado. For there's no Christian soul that needs to be saved by believing rightly can ever tolerate such impossible passages of grossness. He's in. Yellow stockings! Ah, and cross that! <laughs> Most villainously, like a pedant that keeps a school in the church. I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter that I drop to betray him. He does smile his face to more lines than is the new map with the augmentation of the increase. <laughs> you have not seen such a thing as this. Oh, I could hardly forbear hurling things at him. <laughs> I know my lady will strike him, and if she do, and take it for a great favor. <laughs> Come, bring us where he is. Bring us where he is. I would not by my will have troubled you, but since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filed steel, did spur me through. And not all love to see you, though such might draw one to a much longer but jealousy, what might befall your travel, being skillless in these parts, which, to a stranger, unfriended and unguided, can often prove rough and inhospitable. My willing love, the rather by these arguments of fear, set forth in your pursuit. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks, and thanks, and ever thanks. And oft good turns are shuffled off with such uncurrent pain. But were my worth, as is my conscience firm, 
You should find better demons. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodging. I am not weary, and tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and things of fame that do renown this city. Would you would pardon me, sir? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once, in a sea fight against the Count his galleys, I did some service of such note indeed that were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. But like you slew a great number of his people. The offence is not of such a bloody nature. Oh could since have been answered in repaying what we took from them, which for traffic's sake most of our city did, only I myself stood out, for which if I be lapsed here, I shall pay dear. Do not then walk too open. It doth not suit me. Hold, sir. Here's my purse. In the south suburbs of the Elephant Crest Lodge, there shall you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are your purse? Happily, your eye shall light upon some toy that you have desired to purchase. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elephant. I do remember. <laughs> in the blood, this cross gartering. But what of that? If it please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true son it is. Please one and please all. Why, how dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs. It did come to his hands and command shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed! Ah, aye, sweet love, and I'll come to thee. What comfort thee? Why dost thou smile so? How do you, Malvolio? At your request, yes, Nightingale's answer doors. Why do you with its ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness, t'was well written. What meanest thou by that? Some are born great, <laughs> some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. Heaven restore thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stocking? Thy yellow stocking! And wished to see thee ever cross-garted? Cross-garted? Go to, thou art maid, if thou desirest to be so. Am I maid? If not, let me see thee a servant ah! still! <laughs> what is the merriment of a madness? Adam, the young gentleman from Crown Dolphino's court has returned. I could hardly entreat him back. He awaits your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where is my cousin Toby? How do my people take special care of him? I will not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sends him on purpose, that I may appear stubborn to him, for she incites me to that in the letter. Cast thy humble slough, says she, be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants, that thy tongue tang arguments of state put thyself into the trick of singularity and consequently sets down the manner how, as a sad face, a reverend carriage, a slow tongue, in the habit of some sir or goat, and so forth. I have lime, sir, but it is Jove's doing. Jove make me thankful. And when she went away, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow? Not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but Fellow, <coughs> why, everything adheres together, 
that no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance, what can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Jove, not I, is the doer of this. He is to be thanked. Which way is he in the name of sanctity? Here he is. Here he is. How is it with you, monsieur? How is it with you, man? Go off. I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Go off. No, how hollow the thing speaks within him. Did not I tell you? Sir Toby, my lady, prays you have a care of him. Ah, does she so? Go to, go to, peace, peace. We must deal with him gently. How do you, Malvolio? How is it with you? Hmm? What man? Defy the devil? He's an enemy of mankind. And you speak ill of the devil, how he takes his heart. Pray God he be not bewitched. Carry his water to the wise woman. Oh, I'm marrying, it shall be done tomorrow morning if I live. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. How oh, now, mistress? <laughs> no, oh, Prithee, peace. This is not the way. Do you not see you move him? Let me alone with him. Nay, gently, gently. The fiend is one, he will not be one for you. How now, Borcock? How is it with you, Chuck? Sir? I bid he come with me. No. What then? You say his prayers, Sir Toby, get him to pray. My prayers, miss. Oh, no, I warrant you. Oh, he will not hear of godliness. Go, hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> Is it possible? If this were on a stage now, I would condemn it as an improbable. <laughs> His very genius has taken the infection of the device. <coughs> Arrange it to him now, lest the device take her and take. We shall make him mad indeed. The house will be the quieter. <laughs> Come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. <coughs> My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. We may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance, till our very pastime, tired out of breath, prompt us to have mercy upon him, at which time we'll bring the device to the bar and crown thee, finder of madmen. <coughs> but see, but see. Oh, ooh. oh. More matter for a May morning. Here's the challenge. Oh. Read it. Warrant it. Vinegar and pepper in it. <laughs> Is it so saucy? I, I warrant him. Do but read. <laughs> Give me. <laughs> Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Oh, good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. Oh, a good note keeps you from a blow from the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, but thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief and exceedingly good sense, less. <laughs> I will way lady going home. Where if it be thy chance to kill me, God! thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Oh, still you keep the windy side of the law. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better, so look to thyself. Thy friend as thou uses him, and thy sworn enemy, and will be. If this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it to him. You may have very fit occasion for it. He's now in some commerce with my lady, and will by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew, scout me for him at the corner of the orchard, and as soon as ever thou seest him, draw. And as thou drawest, swear horrible. <laughs> Nay, let me alone for swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Now will not I deliver this letter. 
This letter, being so excellently ignorant, will breed no terror into the youth. <laughs> he will find it comes from a clodpole. <laughs> but I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth and set upon Agu Cheek a notable report of valour. This will drive the gentleman, as I know the youth will aptly receive it, into a hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. <laughs> this will so fright them both. They will kill one another by look. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, here he comes with your knee. Make way till he take leave and presently after him. I have said too much unto a half of stone, and laid mine honour to uncherry out. There's something in me that reproves my fault, and such a headstrong and potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof that the same behaviour your passion bears goes on my master's creep. Here. Swear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you come again tomorrow. What should you ask of me that I'll deny? That honour save me upon asking here. Nothing but this. A true love for my master. What can I give to him which I have given to you? I will acquit you. Then come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. <coughs> that the events thou hast be taken thee to it. Of what natures are the, the wrongs you have done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite and bloody as a hunter, attends thee at the orchard end. You are mistaken, <laughs> sir. And my remembrance is very free and clear from any offence done to any man. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, for thy opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish a man with all. Pray you, sir, what is he? He is knight so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. <laughs> again to the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some men who purposely put quarrels on others to taste their valour. Uh, be this a man of that No, sir! So get you on and give him his desire. Back you shall not to the house unless you undertake with me that with which as much safety you might answer him. This is uncivil and strange. I beseech you, do you mean a courteous office as to know the night what my offence has done to him? Something of my negligence? Nothing of my purpose? Sweet Fabian, stay you by this gentleman till my return. Pray you, do you know this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, but nothing of the circumstance. What manner of man is he? Nothing of that wonderful promise to weed him by his form as you are like to find in the proof of his valor. He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite that you could possibly have found in all of Illyria. <laughs> Will you walk towards him? I'll make your peace with him if I can. I should be much bound to for it. <coughs> I'm one that had rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows so much of my metal. The youth's a very devil. Now not meddle with him. He will not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him Maybe. yonder. And I thought he'd been valiant and so cunning in the defence. I'd have seen him damned or I'd have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and uh, I'll give him my horse. Stand there, I'll make the motion. Make a good show, it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. <laughs> <laughs> I have his horse to take up the quarrel, and I persuaded him the youth's a very devil. He is as horribly conceited of him, and he pants, and he looks pale, as if a bear were at his heels. <laughs> There's no remedy, sir. <laughs> he will fight you. Though he hath bethought him of his quarrel, now finds it scarce worth talking. 
therefore draw in supportance of his vow. Good. He persists. He will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you seem furious. Imagination proved true that I, dear Sebastian, be taken for you? Will you make me believe that I am not sent for you? Go to, go to. Thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Oh, well held out in faith. No, I do not know you, nor is your name not Master Cesario. Nor am I not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her. Nor is this not my nose. Neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knows not me. <coughs> vent my folly? She's heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Who? Oh, vent my folly. Oh, I prithee, unguard thy strangeness and tell me what I should vent to my lady. Should I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, depart from me. Then money. If you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. Oh, by my troth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money get themselves a good report. After 14 years purchase. What? Now, sir, have I missed you again? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> there is for thee, and there, and there! Are all the people mad? Come, sir, hold on, throw your dagger on the house. This will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for tuppence. Come, sir, hold. Nay, uh, let him alone. I've got another way to work with him. I'll take an action of battery against him if there be any laws in Illyria. So, I struck him first, yet there's no matter for that. Let go thy hand! Nay, sir, I will not let you go. 
Come, my young soldier, put up your iron, your well flesh. Come on. I will be free oh. for me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what wouldst thou now? If thou darest tempt me further, draw thy sword. <laughs> Nay, then I must have an answer to this malapert blood from you. Hold! Hold me on thy life, I charge thee! Hold! Madam. Ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and barbarous caves, where manners never were preached, out of my sight! Be not offended, dear Cesario. Bruce, we be gone! <laughs> with my niece, I cannot pursue this sport with any safety to the option. Come by by to my chamber. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you 
Robin, Charlie Robin, <coughs> tell me how thy lady does. My lady is unkind, honey, oh. and that's why is she so. Oh, she loves. You call her? Oh, good oh. soul. As ever there was a devil at my hand, help me to a candle and pen, ink, and paper. Uh, as I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee, boy. Master Malvolio! Aye. Alas, sir! How fell you beside your five wits? The fool was never man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well. Then you are mad indeed if you are no better in your wits than a fool. They have here profited me. Keep me in darkness. Send ministers to me. Asses. And do all they can to face me out of my wits. <gasps> Advise you what you say. The minister is here. Malfolio, Malfolio. <laughs> the wits the heavens restore. Endeavour thyself to sleep. And leave the vain bibble babble. Sir Topaz. <laughs> Maintain no words with him, good fellow. Who? I, sir. Not I, sir. God be with you, good Sir Topaz. Mary, amen. I will, sir. I will, sir. Oh, oh fool, I say. Alas, what say you, sir? Be patient. I am shent for speaking to you. Good fool. Help me to some light and some paper. I tell thee I'm as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Well, well a day that you were, sir. By this hand I am. Good fool. Pen. Good fool. Pen, paper, and ink, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage me more than ever the bearing of letter did. Tell me, sir, are you mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Oh, believe me, I am not. I tell the truth. Nay, no, I shall never believe a madman till I see his brains. I'll fetch you light and paper and ink. Oh, fool, I will requite it in the highest degree. I present be gone. Oh, I am gone, sir. And anon, sir. I do go, my devil. <laughs> this is the air. That is the glorious sun. <coughs> this pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though it is wonder that enwraps me thus, yet it is not madness. Where is Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was. And there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service. For though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, but no madness, doth this accident blood of fortune so far exceed all instance or discourse and I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad or else the lady's mad yet if it were so she could not range her house command her followers take and give back affairs and their dispatch discreet and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceiver. But here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, then go with me and with this holy man into the chantry by, and there, under that consecrated roof, plight me the full assurance of your faith. What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you, and having sworn truth ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine that they shall fairly know this act of mine. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. As thou lovest me, let me see the letter. Oh, sweet Fabienne, grant me another request. Anything. <laughs> Do not desire to see this letter. But that is to give a dog, and in recompense, desire my dog again. <laughs> you to the 
Lady Olivia, friend. Ah, <laughs> sir, we are some of her trappings. I, I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the worse for my friends and the better for my foes. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. Uh, how can that be? Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now, my foes tell me plainly that I am an ass, so... By my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends, I am abused. So that, uh, conclusions to be as kisses, if your four negatives make your two affirmatives. <laughs> Why so? The worse for my friends, and the better for my foes. Why, this is wonderful. No, sir. Though it please you to be one of my friends. You shall not be the worse for me. There's gold. Oh, but that it would be double dealing, sir. I would you could make it another. Oh, you. Give me ill counsel. Oh, put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once and let your flesh and blood abate. Well, I'll be so much a sinner as to be a double dealer. There's another. A primo secundo tertio is a good play, and as the old saying is, the third pays for all. You can fool no more money out of me at this throat. If you will go to your lady and let her know that I'm here to speak with her, it may awake my bounty further. <laughs> Mary, sir. Lullaby to your bounty till I come again. <laughs> I go, sir. So. Here comes the man that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. What's the matter? Oh, Sino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her fraud from Candy. Here in the streets, Desperate of shame and state, in private rabble did I apprehend him. He did me kindness, drew upon my side, but forced a strange speech upon me. I know not what, but forced distraction. Notable pirate, thou salt water thief. What? Foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies, whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hast made thine enemy. Orsino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief nor pirate, though I confess on base and grounds enough, Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither. <laughs> That ungrateful boy by your side, from the rude seas, enraged and foamy mouth did I redeem. A wreck past hope he was. This life I gave him and did thereto add my love, without retention or restraint, all his in devotion. For his sake, pure for his love, did I expose myself into the dangers of this adverse town. Drew to defend him when he was beset, where being apprehended, his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, Thought him to face me out of his acquaintance, for a twenty years removed thing while one would wink. Denied me my own purse, which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months <laughs> before, no interim, not a minute's vacancy, both day and night did we keep company. <laughs> Here comes the countess! Oh, thou heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me. But more of that anon, take him aside. What would my lord, but that he may not have, where Olivia may see him serviceable? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam? Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak. My duty hushes me. If it ought to be to the old tune, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, my lord. What? To perverseness? You, uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and inauspicious altars my soul the faithfulest offerings has breathed out that air devotion tender. What shall I do? Do. Even what it so please, my lord, that shall become him. Why should I not? Had I the heart to do it, like to the Egyptian thief at point of death, kill what I love, hmm? A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly. But hear me this. 
Since you to non regardance cast my faith, and but that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, live you the marble breasted tyrant still. <laughs> but this your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dear, him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts grow ripe in mischief. I will sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I, most jocund, apt, and willing to do you rest, a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love. More than I love these eyes, more than I love my life. It I do fain these witnesses of both. Oh, punish my life for the changing of my love. I me detested. How am I beguiled? Who just beguiled you? Who just you wrong? Has I forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come away. Whither, my lord, Cesario, husband, stay. <laughs> husband? Aye, husband, can be that deny? Her husband, <laughs> sir? No, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Oh, welcome, father. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence. Here, sir, for what thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. <laughs> A contract of eternal bond of love, confirmed by mutual joiner of your hands, attested by the holy clues of lips, strengthened by interchangement of your rings, and all this ceremony come back sealed in my function, as by my testimony. Since when, by what hath told me, towards my grave, I have travelled but two hours. <laughs> oh, you dissembling cub! What wilt thou be when time hath sowed a grizzle on thy face? Or else? Will not thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? Farewell, and take her. But direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear, for thou hast too much fear. But the love of God, a surgeon. Oh, a sentinel just had told me presently. What's the matter? Why, he hath broke my head across and given Sir Toby a bloody coxcoat too. Oh, for the love of God, your help. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? Uh, Count's gentleman, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil. Pardon it. My gentleman, Cesario. Ah! Oh, 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 there he is. You broke my head for nothing. And that that I did, I was set on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? You drew your sword upon me without cause, but, but I bespoke you fair and, and I hurt him not. If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me. But I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Oh, here comes Sir Toby halting. You shall hear more. Oh, how now, gentlemen? How is it with you? There's no one. Has hurt me. <laughs> there's a man. Did see Dick the surgeon, son. Oh no, he's drunk, Sir Toby, an hour ago, and his eyes were set at eight in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> then he's a rogue, and I hate drunken rogues. Away with him! Who hath made this havoc with them? I'll go with Sir Toby, for we shall be dressed together. <laughs> Will you help? Oh. Acid, coxcomb, knave, inflationary. <laughs> go! Get to him to bed and let his hurt be looked to. I am sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I must <coughs> have done no less with wit or safety. You throw a strange regard upon me, and by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other but so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and, and two persons. A natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio, good Antonio, oh, 
Oh, the hours have racked and tortured me since I have lost thee. Sebastian, is it? Yes, thou that, Antonio. How have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two could not be more alike than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Do I stand there? I never had a brother. Nor can there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere I had a sister. Whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman, what name, what parentage? Of Messalin. Sebastian was my father. Such as Sebastian was my brother too, so he once suited you to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. A spirit I am indeed, but am in that dimension grossly clad, which from the womb I did participate. Were you a woman, as the rest goes even, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say, Thrice welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so have mine. And died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered thirteen years. That record is lively in my soul. He finished indeed his mortal act. That day, but made my sister thirteen years. Do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune do cohere and jump that I am violent. to her bias drew in that. You would have been contracted to a maid, nor are you therein by my life deceived. You are betrothed, both to maid and man. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy wreck. a thousand times said to me, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I swear, and keep as true as soul as doth the orbit continent, the fire that serves day from night. Give me your hands, and let me see thee, uh, in thy women's weeds. <laughs> the captive that did bring me first on shore hath my maiden's garment. Hereupon some action is now held in durance. Malvolio suit a gentleman and follower of my ladies. Fetch Malvolio hither. And yet, alas, and now I remember me. Poor gentleman, he's much distressed. A most distracting frenzy of mine own. From my remembrance, clearly banished his. How does he, sir? Truly, madam, he holds Beelzebub at the stave's end as well as a man in his case may do. Does he have written a letter to you? I would have given it you today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospel, so it skills not much when they are delivered. Open it and read it. Look then. <laughs> so be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. <laughs> By the Lord, madam, you wrong me! I do but read madness, and your ladyship will have as it ought to be. You must allow box. You wrong me! Read it! Read it thy right wit. So I do, madam, but to read in his right wits is to read thus. Therefore, perpend my princess and give ear. Read Let you! <laughs> By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right or you much shame. Think of me as you please, 
I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury the madly used Malvolio. Did he write them? I imagine. <laughs> oh, uh, this saver's not much of distraction. See him delivered, Fabian. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, um, uh, and for your service done him, uh, so much against the metal of your sex, uh, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, and since you called me master for so long. Here is my hand. You shall from this day be your master's mistress. A sister you are she. Is this the madman? <laughs> Aye, the same. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. There you have. Pray you, peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand or praise <coughs> or say, it is not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then, and tell me in the modesty of honor why you have given me such clear lights or favor, bade me come smiling and cross-guarded to you, to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the like of you. Acting this in an obedient hope. Why have you suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by the priest, and made the most notorious get and gull that air in pension played on? Tell me, why? Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. So I confess, much like the character, but out of question, tis Mariah's hand. And now I do bethink me. It was she first told me thou was mad, then came us in smiling, in such forms which were presupposed upon thee in the letter. Prithee, be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee. But when we know both the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and judge of thine own form. Good madam, hear me speak, and let no quarrel nor no brawl to come take the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at. I hope it shall not. Most freely I confess, myself and Toby set a device against Malvolio here, upon some uh, stubborn and uncourteous parts which we devised against him. Maguire writ the letter, at Sir Toby's great importance, in recompense whereof he hath married her. Oh, how is sportful malice it was followed, may rather pluck on laughter than revenge, if such the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides borne. Alas, poor fool, how have they baffled thee? Right! Some are born great, some achieve greatness, <laughs> and some have greatness <laughs> to own a pattern. <laughs> I was one, sir, in this interlude, one Sir Topaz, <laughs> but that's all one. No, oh, um, by the Lord, fool, I am not mad. <laughs> but do you remember? Madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal and you smile not his gag? And thus, the whirligig of time brings in his revenges. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. He hath been most notoriously abused. Seek him out and bring him to a peace. Meantime, <laughs> sweet sister, uh, we will not part from hence. Cesario, come. <laughs> oh, so you shall be while you are a man. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. When 